Do you know what a crossover is? Do you know that E is? Do you know what Silver Rhyme Control does? Or time correction. If the answer is no to any of those, check out this video. We're going to show you how to do it on this new Kenwood radio. So stay tuned. So there's two ways to access the EQ. You can easily tap EQ, or you can go to the home button, select gears, and then it'll bring up audio, and then equalizer, and enter. Once you're on the EQ, you have a 13 band EQ. These three bands here are going to be for bass. These three bands here are gonna be for treble. And the ones in the middle are just that, they're mid-range. Now you have presets, natural, rock, pop, easy, top 40, jazz, and powerful. Now the nice thing about these is you can listen to these on your stereo and see how it performs. Get an idea by looking at these curves, what sounds good and what doesn't. So then you can just reduce them or boost them and make your user EQ setting. So it's a great place to start on one of those preset uh, EQ settings and then take it right over in the user. You also have your supple for volume control right here. And then you have all source. Now all source is a new feature for Kenwood. They've had it for about two years now. So how the Kenwood works is depending on what source you're on, you can have a different EQ setting for each one of those sources. Now some people that is a bit overwhelming, understandably, because you have 13 bands, you have five sources, you can have five EQ settings. Some people love it because they just love playing with their EQ. If you're not that guy, then you want to select all source. Basically what this is telling you is that your EQ will be applied to all sources. You select OK. So now every source that you're listening to will have this one custom EQ setting sound effect. The one thing that I really like about Kenwood is their ability to press a button and make it sound immediately better. And this is where that happens. Loudness, most radios have loudness. This has two-step loudness, low and high. What loudness is used for is if you're one of the people that listen to music at a low volume pretty much all the time, you can miss out on some of the impact to the music just because it's at such a low volume. With using loudness, it'll compensate for that and make the music sound more dynamic at a lower volume. As you turn the volume up, loudness naturally rolls off because it doesn't need it anymore. Bass boost. Bass boost is great if you live somewhere where the music doesn't have bass recorded in it. That really doesn't happen all that much here in the US, so we strongly recommend leaving it off. However, if you're outside the US or if you listen to music that just doesn't have good bass, Bass boost can be very helpful to bring that bass back into the music and make it sound boomier than it would normally do. Drive EQ. Drive EQ reduces cabin noise. So it's kind of like noise canceling built into the radio. It's one of those things you can turn on and off. Most people leave it off. Um, but if you have a really noisy car, you might want to turn it on and it might improve the way it sounds. Spatial enhancer. You have small, medium, and large. And it basically does exactly what the name says. It makes the music sound larger or smaller. Supreme on and off. Supreme was built for the modern world and that everything now is compressed. And compression robs some of the sound away from the recording. So with Supreme on, it will help restore some of that oomph, we'll say, to those crappy pre-recorded music things that you're listening to. There again, you turn on and off. Realizer. Realizer is very similar to Supreme in that it takes the music and tries to make it sound more natural and lifelike. The only difference is, is it gives you three steps in order to do that, so you can work your way through it. Stage EQ. Stage EQ is what I like to call a faux center channel. It basically takes the what you know when you have stereo the whole idea is left right and then it makes it sound like the singer is in the middle somehow it's very hard to do in a car but with the stage eq it will give you that illusion and not only will it give you the illusion it allows you to move it up in the dash or down in the dash depending on where it's at 
So there again, it's a really cool thing to play with. Balance and fader, work this thing any way you want, and then hit center, and it'll go ahead and take it back to center. Speakers and crossovers. Oh boy, here we go. So car settings allows you to pick what type of car it's gonna go in so that you can kind of give the radio's DSP an idea of what you're trying to do in this vehicle. What is it in and what does what is it trying what is it trying to make sound good? So like if you have a compact, a full-size car, wagon, minivan, SUV, minivan long. Um, so we'll just pick a compact for right now. And then it's gonna ask you about the rear speakers. Where are they at? Are they in the doors? Are they in the rear deck? So once you set that up, it gives the radio's DSP a little bit more information to go off of. Now, the second step is speaker select. So we'll go ahead and come here. Now what this allows you to do is tell it what size speakers are in the car. So for example, you have front speakers here. Is it a six by nine? Uh, probably not, because it's a compact. More than likely, it's going to have a six and a half. Does it have a tweeter? Yes. Has a small tweeter. Then we can go to the rear speaker. There again, set it up the same way. It's a six and a half. And then let's say you put two 12s in the car. So at this point, you can just, you're done. You can go back and play the next setting. Uh, the radio has an idea of what you're trying to do. It knows you're going to have six and a half, so you're going to have a 12. It'll set up a generic crossover point. It'll make everything sound okay. If you want it to take to the next level, you're going to want to hit crossover. As you can see, it's already set up some kind of a curve here because it knew you had a 12. It's picked a frequency that you thought you might want to be crossed over at. It's a generic setting. So now, let's say you don't want it. You want to have it more at, let's say, 80, and you want it a 18 db slope and as you can see it changed over here we'll do that again and I'll move this let's say 24 let's go back to 18. Uh, you can also adjust the phase on the subwoofer normal or reversed basically that means is the woofer moving forward backward forward backwards or backwards forward backwards forward sometimes by switching the phase uh, it will improve the bass response when mixed with the mid and tweeter. So it's definitely something to play with. You can't hurt anything by doing it other than make it either sound better or worse or nothing at all. If it doesn't affect it in any, any way at all, even on normal. When you're done, go ahead and go back. Come over here to the front. Select crossover. The front's going to give you a whole bunch of options. You have tweeter gain left and right. You have tweeter frequency. You have gain for the mid-range and this is just a negative gain by the way it's not a positive gain because it's really not a volume control all this allows you to do is do blending uh, and then you have the frequency so in this case we'll come over here and let's say we want to cross this guy over at 150 hertz and we want to bring it to 12 db because we have a really entry level pair of six and a halfs and we want to get as much mid-range out of them as possible without playing down into the lower frequencies so if you keep an eye on that blue line there if you'll notice it changes so at 6 db we're probably going to get 50 hertz playing at very low volume i mean it's at negative 8 dbs let's look at negative 3 dbs um, there again it's probably let's say 150 hertz so if we jack it up to 12 db we're gonna get almost no bass out of that thing at all. So that'll be good. Now, the tweeter, what this is doing is this is an attenuation for the tweeter to bring the tweeter down. It's like a high pass crossover for the tweeter. So it's very weird. Uh, it comes out of the front channels. It's not like it's on its own channel. Um, and there again, you can reduce the volume. If you notice over here, see how it's going down? Um, so if you have your tweeter up in the dash and it's extremely loud or harsh, you can use this crossover to block those harsh frequencies out of it uh, so that you end up with like almost a bandpass here. Uh, it's very helpful, especially now that tweeters are mounted up in those A pillars and they're just like right in your face and they're just hammering away at you. This portion here allows you to adjust that down uh, to make them sound less harsh. So it's, it's something to play with for sure and can really improve the sound of the tweeters. Go back. And there again, repeat the process for the rear speaker. 
Rear speaker is real simple. We'll go ahead and turn that on. We'll pick, you know, we'll go a little bit higher because it's a rear and just so that it looks cool. So then over here, it's going to constantly give you an updated view of what's going on in the car so you can take a look at your crossover. When you're setting up a crossover, I strongly recommend, especially for the high pass, having the subwoofer off because uh, sometimes these things will distort and the subwoofer will mask them and you don't want that to happen. Crossovers are complicated, there's no doubt about it. It's one of those things you just kind of play with. Uh, you can damage your speaker if you do it wrong, but if you don't do it, you can damage your speaker as well. So you're definitely gonna wanna do it. But that is the nice thing about the Kenwood is that because of all its basic setup, you can either get as simple or as advanced as you want. So time alignment is a feature that can make or break a system. This is one of those things that you can just leave off and never knew you had and everything will be great. But once you turn it on, you're going to be allured by how cool it is and what it can do to make your sound sound amazing. And Kenwood has made it simple there again. You have two choices as far as how easy or hard you want it to be. They give you the option to simply select where you're sitting, seating in the car. And when you do that, you'll notice that these numbers over here are changing because it's compensating for the fact that these are going to be generic. So it's compensating for the fact that these are going to be two people here as opposed to just one person and it's moving around the center point of the vehicle. So right now it's going to be centered on here. If you come up here and select gain, you also notice that it has adjusted the volume of each speaker because you don't need a speaker that's close to you as loud as a speaker that's far away from you. This one has a longer distance, so it needs to be a little bit louder than this speaker. So this allows you to turn those down. Now, you can keep it as simple as possible, or there again, if you'd like to make it more interesting, you can enter these numbers by yourself by measuring the distance from your head to each corner, taking the longest speaker out and subtracting it from the shortest speaker and then entering those numbers in. Once you do that, and then you can come back, play some music, you can enter into this, and you can adjust your gain as well. Last but not least is volume offset. Volume offset allows you to go in and adjust the volume output for each individual source, so that when you're going from source to source to source, the volume doesn't go really loud, really quiet, really loud, really quiet. Uh, this is also helpful too if you have a device that doesn't have a really hot output, let's say over Bluetooth, it's diminished, meaning the for some reason the output volume is kind of low. You can come in here and you can turn this up. The same is true for your aux input. If it doesn't have a really good aux output, you can adjust that so that when you're changing through each source, they all have relatively the same amount of volume. Very helpful feature. Now, once you're done setting up this and you've got it sounding amazing and you're like, damn, that took like an hour, maybe two, or it took a week, a month of Sundays, whatever. It took you all this time. And you're like, whew, man, if I ever have to do that again, yeah, we've all been there. And then you disconnect the battery and you're pretty much screwed. And you have to do it all over again because you weren't cool enough to take pictures of it on your phone. No problem. Select system. And then scroll to page two, select enter. And this screen right here is what you're looking for. Would you like to memorize or recall the audio and AV setup? Select yes. Please select the desired function from the memory below. Memory. Would you like to override the initial memorized settings? Yes. So now what it's done is it has memorized all those settings. So when you lose power, you're going to come back and you're going to select recall. And then you'll select yes again. And then I'll bring back those features so that you can go right from zero to hero and not have to spend all that time again. Makes life way easier. You know, these are my favorite videos. I love doing the EQ ones because at the end of the day, you buy the radio for all the cool features, Bluetooth and you know, all that. But really, it's when you get in and play with the sound settings that really sets it apart from that factory radio. These things do so much. It's crazy. Insane. <sighs> yes, in the membrane. Insane in the brain.
Alright, whatever. Wrap it All up. Alright, so thank you for watching. You guys can find us on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. And as usual, like it, subscribe, ask questions. Five days a week, remember? I know, how could you possibly forget? <laughs> you guys have a great night, and we will see you later next time. Bye.